Welcome to Valence Developer Diaries number 36. And today uh, we're going to walk through the new scrolling container that was added recently and talk about some app variable links for tab containers that can be useful for you that somewhat new. Um, <clears throat> just before I kick off, Sean's going to, I'll drive, Sean will talk through it. Um, just to let you know. If you have any questions, issues, or whatever, of course, use our forms, please. And if you have any questions during this session, if you're on here, feel free to use the chat. And from that, I'm going to take it, give it off to Sean. I'm going to mute my mic. All right. Okay. So I think maybe before we get into the, uh, you know, how, how we did this, maybe we'll just walk through the application first, just so you see uh, what we're, you know, looking or what, what we accomplished with it. So nothing special here. We've just got a grid, you know, in our main section here. So if, uh, you know, we click one of these customers, it's taking us into a new section where we're utilizing a tab panel with two tabs. Um, we've got a uh, form inside the customer tab, and then we have an orders tab, which has a grid. So this will be the, the, the first part we'll show. So if we go to that customer's tab, um, you know, this form, uh, you know, like imagine, you know, you've got many tabs, uh, you, and it'd be nice to have some visual indication to know that there's an air or, you know, one of these tabs needs some attention. So if we, uh, yeah, so if Johnny's just going to remove the name, you know, nothing new in that form, right? You know, it just highlights that it's a required field, but notice that the tab is, is, is showing that there's an air. So as soon as we type something back in, you know, it goes away. Um, Maybe, maybe, maybe we go to App Builder now and just show that first part because I know there's there's something else we've done with that tab too. But let's see how we accomplish that. So the first thing um, we did is on this form, I want a, a way to know if that form is an error. So there's an app variable under the general section of is invalid, and basically. If you put an app variable to there, we, we called it customer form and error. It will set it to true or false, whether the, you know, if the form is invalid, that it'll set that to true. If it's not invalid, it'll be customer form and error will be false. So that's, that's the first linkage. Um, so now if we yeah, cancel out of that, if we go down to our, so notice he's going down to the settings for that container. That container is the tab that holds the two, uh, the customer, customer and the orders tab. And we're gonna go to link tab variables. And you'll see that for as many tabs as you have, there will be a section on the left, tab one. Every one of these tabs will have these same properties available. So tab air underscore one, customer form in air. So if that's set to true, that's what's giving us that visual indication. Um, that, that little red, you know, icon showing that there's an air. So it's just using the customer form in air. Okay. So now if we go back to the application and um, we, we, we've also demonstrated that, you know, in some cases, you may want to stop the user from moving to another tab because you want them to be able, or at least you want to prompt them and let them know that something may be wrong with the information in the tab. And in this case, we mapped it to the state. We're saying, you know, if you, if state is blank and they try and leave the tab, let's let them know about it. State is empty. Are you sure you want to continue? If he clicks no, it'll keep them there. And if he clicks yes, uh, you know, we'll go, it'll go to the tab they're, they're trying to get to. So let's see how we accomplish that. So back to our form, if we go back to our form, um, and we go to link, if we go to the, so we can, you know, we can, we can get the, the, 
the field value of any form, we can map that to an app variable. So as the user types in or, or data source loads, it'll automatically change that app variable through this linkage. So we created one, we called it customer state value, and we linked it to the field value of state. So anytime state changes, customer state value app variable will change, okay? So that was the first part. Now, if we go, let's just, let's just go to the tab um, linkage again, and let's look at tab one. Tab confirm exit under, you know, underscore one, you know, for the first tab. Like if we go, if we look at tab two, just to point that out, it's, you know, a different property underscore two for tab two. So this, we have a new app variable called customer tab confirm. So basically the way this works, if customer tab confirm is blank, there's no text value, we're not going to prompt anything. But if there's any text value in there, then it will, you know, do this confirm of the exit. So the next question is, is how are we populating customer tab confirm? Because really, if state has a value, we want that to be blank because I don't want to confirm. But if state is blank, I want that to have, you know, some text value in it. So it will confirm if they try and leave. So let's go to the app variable uh, definition. And here, you can see we're using and the expressions. So what does this mean? So this is some JavaScript here. If customer state value, we have a, a, a an exclamation point. So if it's if it's if it's not empty, then the value will be state is empty. Are you sure you want to continue? Otherwise, null. Okay, so basically that just means. If customer state value, you know, if that that's linked from that form of the state field, if it is not empty, this will automatically have the text of state is empty. Are you sure you want to continue? Otherwise, if it has a value, it'll be null. And that that's how that's working. So uh, I guess maybe if, if, if there are any questions on that, maybe now might be a good time if you want to just put it in the chat. Hopefully that's all clear. Those are the only two items we're showing from the, uh, oh, wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> Johnny's pointing. I think there's, uh, what else are we showing? Oh, sure. Yeah. So so we we didn't do an example in here, but um since we're in these, you know, app variable linkages with tabs, you know, we added, you know, some other things too. Um anytime a tab is activated, whether it's tab 1 or tab 2 or, you know, whatever tab you want to uh, do it for, if you put if you you can link an app variable to like, for example, tab, tab fire event active one, if your app variable has a value, let's say it's X, Y, Z, it's going to fire an event called X, Y, Z. And you can listen for that event in your application. Okay, so if you needed to, you know, fire an event or you need something to, something to happen when the user, you know, focused on a tab. And you can also do it when the user leaves a tab as well, when they exit a tab. Okay. All right. I don't anything else with tabs here. I don't think. Um, so the next part of this is it's it's not really it's not related at all to tabs, but we just wanted to show a new utility widget, and this utility widget is, you know, very much like you know one you already know, which is the vertical container, um, but this behaves a little differently. So. If we click one of these orders, now we're seeing the details for the order. And, you know, this might look a little strange because typically um, you would see this where the, the widgets would take up the full amount of space on the screen. Um, 
instead what we've done is we've wrapped these two widgets in a scrolling container um if we have another order that has more detail let's see here We're just looking for an order that has uh, just some more uh, detail to it. That way we'll see the uh, the grid actually blow off the screen. We're just kind of, there we go. Okay, so notice the grid, you know, there's no scrolling within the grid. The scrolling is within the page. So every widget here is gonna take all the vertical space that it needs. Now, obviously, with a form, it's a pretty fixed height, but with a grid, right, you can have, you know, zero to many rows. So it's just going to take up the full height that it needs, and the page will scroll. So that's the, the scrolling container. So every widget you put into this scrolling container is going to take the, the height that it needs. And if it overflows the screen, the whole screen is going to scroll. Uh, I think, I think that's it. Yeah, maybe actually let's, let's take a look at that. Um, so if let's, let's pretend we're, uh, you know, creating a new section, maybe. And, you know, normally maybe I would do a vertical container, but in, in this case, I want, I want the, uh, I want the widgets to take up their full height that they need and allow the body to scroll. So I would choose the scrolling container. And then from here, it's just business as usual. You know, give it a name, hover over it, add a widget. Yep. And if he adds another widget, you know, maybe we'll start rolling off the screen. Yep. Okay. So that's the uh, scrolling container. Uh, if there are any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, uh, I think that's all we have to show. I uh, hope it was helpful. And we will uh, talk to you next time.